everybody how we doing today so I almost lost Rusty three times this year so I figured it'd be a good idea to make a video about him just in case I actually can't save him now Rusty is a 1997 Honda Civic DX three-door hatchback uh, it's based on Honda's most economical package it's considered kind of the commuter package for the California Bay Area. It was the Civic's most baseline package, no power anything. So you had manual door locks, manual windows, no power steering, no, not even a CD player, just cassette, no air conditioning. Basic. This model came with a five-speed manual transmission. And my most favorite part about this car is it being the baseline version. So it's got one fan belt and that's to drive the alternator. No power steering, no air conditioning, no other accessories, one belt. So you can see how basic this is. Much like my little 2.5 horsepower Suzuki, it's not much more than a vac uh, lawnmower engine there. But super, super basic, meaning I could take care of it very easily. Now I bought Rusty in July of 2010 for $3,250. Uh, he had uh, 117,000 miles on it. And currently it's at 178,000 miles. Uh, I remember it was funny because uh, the lady had advertised it for $3,500. It was exactly what I was wanting. I'm fine with it. I was going to pay the $3,500. But when I talked to her, uh, she just said, well, I've never sold a car. and I don't know what I'm doing. So $3,250. And I said, all right. I was going to give you $3,500, but $3,250 is fine. So that's the way we ended it. Um, it did have some problems. Well, the good thing about it is, is it had its complete history. Uh, every dollar that was ever spent on this car, uh, they had kept re documented receipts in order as one of those type of deals. Always went to the servicing at the, uh, the uh, Honda dealership and it just boom, boom, showing everything. So I really liked it. However, it had a problem right off the bat. It had a uh, transmission whine. That was a five-speed manual, but uh, it had a whine in it as it sat there. But if you pushed the clutch in, the wine went away. Um, I wasn't too concerned about it, but I knew that was the reason why she was dumping it off because it was probably a pretty expensive deal uh, price being fixed at the dealership. So I ended up buying it. Um, the reason why I actually bought this car was because I had gone fishing on my buddy's boat and in Sacramento and we were out in the Delta and I saw a guy on a red kayak out there with fishing poles. And it was the first time I ever saw that happen and I was like shocked and amazed and like bells went off my head and I was like, God, I got to do that. That's something that sounds awesome. So I was researching it and going all involved because kind of what I do. And uh, the first thing I decided on was the, to go kayak fishing. The first thing I had to buy was one, a kayak car, two was a kayak rack, and then three, a kayak and that's why I got the green tarpon 140. Now what I found out later was that there was just a little bearing that was worn out and it's kind of common with these uh, five-speed transmissions and the dealership quotes usually around fifteen to two thousand dollars to fix it but fortunately my dad has an awesome set of tools so I went about and uh, went to Craigslist I bought a cheap manual transmission for a hundred bucks because Honda Civic parts are dirt cheap and they're everywhere. And I pulled out this original transmission out, swapped in that $100 one, which had a little bit of problems, but it still worked. And then that gave me time to go through and uh, replace that little bearing. It happened to be in the far tail end of the transmission. Uh, and uh, the only way to get at it, to swip, sw uh, swap it out, is removing the whole internal parts of the uh, transmission take those out so you can knock the bearing out from the backside in and then push in the new bearing and then put all the guts back together again and that was pretty like whoa 
did that the first time took out that new transmission that I just bought temporary put this one in and of course it didn't work so I pulled it back out put in that other spare transmission and got to work and then finally like always taking the time and looking and figuring out how things actually work and why they are the way they are and how they're set in there I got it to work shifted fine outside the car put it in the car put in a new clutch and boom worked perfectly and I had no problem since then and uh, outside of that this car was perfect for basically seven years that I've had it and then this last couple of years not so much but I contributed all that to salt water kills everything and salt water is trying to kill Rusty but uh, <laughs> I'm trying to keep it alive now if you're wondering why Rusty's name is Rusty you can kind of see here now this is all tape holding on this front pillar from the inside and outside otherwise it is gonzoed it's getting lighter so better gas mileage but rough rough business get a lot of rust from these coming apart now this is not this is just cosmetic looking I've actually got it bolted in because that was the only way to keep my uh, kayak rack on there but everything is just rust laden um, as I mentioned in the prior videos I just replaced the uh, oil pan I guess you can't really see there that was leaking uh, just swapped that out for the second time in a couple of years because the whole undercarriage is just rust pretty much all the panels are all rusted through there got all these spots on the other side over there I just used tape to kind of tape up the holes where the rust has already gone through it but yeah and then I go ahead and use black paint instead of washing the car I just paint it in black the all about the bait paddle tails also make great automotive door panel vibration dampeners just take either a 2 and 5 8 inch paddle tail or a 4 inch paddle tail and put it in between the different panels and that'll prevent the vibration and the noise www.allaboutthebait.com now I mentioned that there was a couple of incidents where old Rusty here almost didn't make it uh, one of the uh, last couple had to do with the actual hatchback here uh, falling off the actual car and what had happened was there used to be mounts here and here where there's a swivel point where it there's a bracket that mounts to the actual hatchback and there was a big solid metal brace that goes across here which is no longer there and uh, that's where this, the hatchback swiveled on well that rusted away and fell apart but I thought that was the end of Rusty because I could not figure out how to do it there was no more support places left this is just cardboard so this goes right through the car as you can kind of see there so there's absolutely nothing holding that except the sheet metal on the outside roof part of it there but after a lot of figuring and thinking about what to do I ended up getting some uh, little aluminum flat bar now I was originally thinking about using like stainless steel or something like that but there's no way for me to bend it I had nothing that I could actually bend it I don't have a welder so I had to kind of think of a way that I could actually do it with just the stuff I had on hand and with aluminum is you could heat aluminum and mold it fairly easy if you heat it enough it almost gets to a rubbery pro uh, properties so you could heat it up bend it and it'll mold to place so I just put a couple bolts here heated it up metal molded it down so it kind of fill the contour ran it across got some uh, four dollar hinges from Home Depot and those are door or gate hinges and BAM the hatchback is alive and still running and the lift gates still work now the problem though is it gets a lot of play there and now my hatch doesn't lock down because there's a little bit of a gap because it bows in there from the weight so I could put a support beam going straight down as just props it up and that would kind of align it and then I could lock it but it closes enough and it doesn't bounce around so eh, what do I care I haven't locked this car in three years four years now another uh, possible death to the car just actually I just fixed it today um, 
I was getting, well, I've always had the dummy light because uh, I'm running uh, header replacements, a full exhaust replacement aftermarket, so it doesn't have the O2 sensor, so that automatically uh, sets off the dummy light. But I had the dummy light flashing. I lost pretty much majority of the power, and it would just pop and surge the whole time I tried to accelerate. And the only way I could drive it, if I left it at a certain one little RPM spot, it would allow me to drive so I can go about 45 on the freeway. So the last time I went fishing, that's how I got all the way out to Shark Channel and how I had to drive back like that. But since I had to do the oil pan, I figured uh, why not try to save it. I was about to just scrap the whole car. But uh, I went through and tried to figure things out and then what I came up with was to check the spark plugs. Fortunately, I was able to pull the boots out except for this one. Um, that one got stuck in the bottom and broke off. But what I finally got the little rubber pieces out so I can get the uh, socket on it, the spark plug was barely in there. It just came out without any torsion at all. So I replaced the spark plugs, put new wires on it, and boom, it fires up and idles beautifully. I don't know how long that's been a problem. I've had some starting issues and a little bit of ragged running for a while now, but I think it's all been contributed to that until one point it finally just kind of blew out there. Um, I had lost probably 10 miles a gallon. I was probably getting about 28 miles a gallon, where before I was getting up to about 40 miles to the gallon. And I bet you that was a problem because it runs so smooth now. Super happy about it. But that's such a major relief. Now, last year's uh, fatal flaws had to do with the braking system. Uh, there's a couple of brake lines way down the bottom where it comes to an angle right by the frame and then it groups with the fuel lines and they all go towards the back where where that bend is it caught water and leaves and stuff and it corroded the brake lines and those burst on me one day, lost all brakes. But uh, I went through and just replaced the, the section there and that was fine. Then I blew out another line on this side here, going to the front right brake, and then uh, same issue corrosion, so I fixed that. Then the master cylinder failed, so I replaced that. Then I did the brakes twice because one time the uh, adjuster slide on it uh, rusted and it just ate the brakes away, but now they're running fine. And then on the back one, it wasn't so much brakes, although there's no chance that I'm going to be able to get the drums off now because I stripped out the hole where you can push a bolt through it and it pushes the drum off. But uh, I did the rear wheel bearings because they were going on it. And uh, I was debating whether it was worth it to keep it, but since I replaced them last year, my brakes have been perfect. Then earlier this first part of the year, uh, for a couple months, I was having problems with the clutch. Uh, the clutch going all the way to the floor and just getting stuck like that and then for some reason I was losing fluid So I ended up uh, doing a couple things one I switched out the clutch master cylinder which manual clutch there swapped that out then uh, That didn't resolve the problem I was still getting occasional where it would just sink to the floor and I'd have to use my foot to prop it back up pump it and get it to work so I swapped out the clutch master cylinder down there and I thought that was the problem because I had some sort of leak because the, the volume of uh, fluid would slowly drop somewhere. But then I was uh, cruising through town one day, came to a stop and the clutch went to the floor and I wasn't able to pump it up. Thankfully, some guy came and pushed me out of the way and uh, pushed me to a parking lot and then I was able to bleed the line and then uh, drive it home. And then I finally found out that it was the clutch hard line which is right here which was actually run through the the motor there it had corroded in that one of the junctions uh it had leaked and had slow leak on it so i replaced all the hard lines to the clutch there so all the pneumatic part of the clutch has been replaced and now that works great but that was a big deal of losing clutch randomly where i was like oh this has got to end now something i kind of dealt with but i think would have been a death blow to most people was this car does not have air conditioning. And what the problem with you see with the windows though is a salt water from the kayak dribbles down the side. It gets inside here and it rusts, is, rusts the uh, mechanism inside the uh, doorway there. So I've had to replace that twice where I've gone long periods of time with not being able to roll the windows down. And that is not good in the Florida Keys, especially during the summertime. So on this side, I've had to do the uh, 
the mechanism twice. I finally found a replacement company that sells a replacement that actually works. The first time I did it, uh, it was just junk and it bound up, it didn't work, it locked up, it broke. So I didn't even think I could ever fix it. So I just lived with it and just sweated. Uh, but then I got another company and it worked great. And now it's boom, perfect. So uh, that's definitely loving it there. Then on this side, which was my only salvation, was that um, the little clips that uh, are plastic clips that glue to the glass, which uh, that's where you mount the uh, mechanism to the actual glass, uh, those broke off on this side and uh, went through a lot of trials of how to remove those and get it out and take those clips off, where to find the replacement clips, put it all together, getting to work, but this one works great now too. So. Man, I'm driving in cool style. I don't know if you can see it very well, but that's pretty much the condition of my uh, front suspension, rust. And that's a big risk there. If any of these components actually break, then I'm screwed because there's no way of getting them apart. But they all seem to be working fine, so just keep driving it until something does. Now, I've only been stranded one time, due, and that was due to the uh, battery. I was coming back from fishing and uh, on Stock Island, which is the next island up came to a light stop and lost power and I couldn't even start it wouldn't crank over nothing just totally dead so I was able to like roll it to the side of the road and I was like oh great it was like eight or nine o'clock but fortunately uh, a couple of my viewers from Miami were down fishing and they saw me on the side of the road so they pulled over and they're like hey how's it going what are you doing and just we talked about fishing and stuff and uh, that we tried to jump start it, but it was so dead it wouldn't even take a jump start. So they ended up giving me a ride home. And I was thinking about what to do. Um, then it dawned on me, Kmart was still open. So I got my motorcycle, went to Kmart, bought that battery, came back, got all my tools, drove all the way to Stock Island. It's probably about eight miles from here. Uh, put the battery in, it fired right up parked my motorcycle across the street at a gas station, drove this back home, walked all the way back there, got my motorcycle, and came all the way back. So that worked out good. Now one of the upcoming risks is this summer during the rainy season, none of these seals are do anything. You can basically see right through the car uh, there and there. You can see into the car so when it rains really heavily I actually have to use my kayak pump and pump out all the water from these wells here because it just gets full of water same thing with my trunk it's basically a, a live well back there where the uh, the spare tire goes it's a deep well and that fills all the way with water so I have to use my kayak pump and then just pump all the water out so I don't know if I'll be able to do that for too much longer and it's got the broken windshield. This is actually the second time that I've broken this windshield. Same exact spot, two different reasons. The first time is when I bought my Hobie Adventure Island, I was trying to get the uh, outriggers inside the car right here and they would just almost fit if I jammed them into the corner. And then as I shut the hatch, just barely mount almost to be able to close it. So I just pushed a little bit and it just wedged in there and cracked almost just like that. Now this cracked because the push pull rattles it and con continuously rattles it and it's, when this is sitting out in the sun I think it weakens it and that vibration just finally made it crack and then it grew because the cracks build up from the inside so that kind of sucks but I'm not going to spend 250 bucks to fix that. And that's old Rusty <laughs> and my battle to keep him running. but. Uh, Rusty is an integral part for the Key West Kayak Fishing Channel because when Rusty don't run, I don't go fishing because uh, I can't carry that kayak by myself. Uh, I live four houses down from the water, but still, it's just not a possibility. It's not sustainable for very long periods. But uh, another thing I want to thank my Patreon supporters for, that's where the money's going. Uh, it keeps this guy running. Um, it's been a excellent excellent investment uh, even though all these problems I'm telling you about realistically it's just started this last two years and I've had it since uh, 2010 so a uh, pretty good uh, record I would say um, the other part of it is is that a Honda Civics in the late 90s early 2000 is so dirt cheap to maintain for parts uh, all these repairs that I'm doing 
it's all twenty dollars, forty dollars for the parts because like my oil pan I just pinch, uh, just swapped out the oil pan gasket and you get a free tube of a, a gasket sealant for thirty five dollars free shipping and that, that was I didn't have to buy anything and that was done thirty five bucks uh, but like fixing the hatch I did it for under twenty bucks I think it was around fifteen dollars and that got that working brakes are. 15 20 bucks to do the front brakes and it's all that's all those components are just that just that cheap down there so when something breaks i'm like on a normal car it'd be like thousand two thousand dollars so of course you're like oh god it's a money pit and just get rid of it get another car but when it's like oh fifteen dollars to repair a, a major problem then it's just labor i'm pretty good at fixing stuff so eh, why not and then on the other side for those people that don't understand it if you fish salt water and you put your kayak on top of your car, not good, okay? You can do whatever you want, wash it, wax it after every visit, but that salt water gets on that car, it gets down into every crack and crevice, it dries, and that salt particles, that's where they stay, and they start munching on that metal, and it's just a matter of time. You do it just once, it doesn't matter. Uh, it might be a year, it might be two years, but where that salt lands, it's gonna start eating away and it's really no difference. I fish a lot, um, way more than the average kayak fisherman. Uh, I don't take care of my goods. This car is just another piece of the tool. It's no different than a farmer or a rancher in their work truck. They're not gonna be all, oh, don't get it dirty. They're just gonna like throw crap at it. That's its job. That's the same thing with this car. I don't put any blankets on it, I don't cushion it. I just grab my kayak, drop it on the, the side of it, scrape it up with salt water and sand, drag it along the back of there, and then get it on the rack. Uh, it, kayak will sit on my car most of the time when I'm going out the next day or whatnot. So it basically just drips salt water and sand and sits out in the sun. Uh, the inside, everything comes in here, it's salt water. Uh, even when it doesn't rain, I still have to pump it out every couple of weeks because from all the drippings from the motor, the paddles, all my fishing gear, it just drops water and it accumulates and builds up. Uh, plus how many times have I dumped a, a five gallon bucket full of bait back there where it spills out. I've done that. Uh, bait pieces of uh, stuff in the cast net gets left in here and it reeks and rust and uh, horrible in here, but I think it's given me an immunity to the coronavirus but uh what can i say it's just part of the tool and I, I think it just paid for itself 10 times over so never say anything bad about rusty so after a lot of close calls i figured i'd do this video i've got videos of me loading and loading how i put all that equipment inside here uh but it works and uh works perfectly and uh i've camped in this car with the kayak gear just move it to the side everything folds down Love the hatchbacks. Uh, definitely would get another one just like that. But don't need to because Rusty's running good. But uh, anyways, uh, just wanted to give you a heads up what I've been doing the last couple days. I haven't been fishing. Well, it's been windy as well. But uh, putting some uh, good quality of time with Rusty and getting it back to running again. So I feel comfortable making the 10-mile run up to uh, Geiger Key and Shark Channel. Uh, start chasing those tarpon. So anyways, uh, thanks for watching. Thank you to my Patreon supporters for all that uh, monetary support. Keeps Rusty happy, keeps me happy, keeps you guys happy with the videos. So uh, anyways, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next video. Bye. Puma. Puma. Say, say something. Huh? What? Are you hungry? You want dinner? Yeah? Alright, see you later. <laughs>